Hi everybody, today Butter's here to help us demonstrate the joints of the thoracic limb. So to begin with, let's find the spine of the scapula and follow that down distally to that distal teardrop shape of chromion. And once we find that, you move a little bit cranial ventrally and you find the greater tubercle of the humerus. And the space between the acromion and the greater tubercle of the humerus is considered the shoulder joint. So the flexor surface of the shoulder joint is the caudal surface. So any movement that decreases the angle between the humerus and the scapula is considered flexion of that joint. And conversely, any movement that increases the angle between the humerus and the scapula would be considered extension of the shoulder joint. So moving down the humerus then, we can come down the humerus to the widest point here in the elbow region, and that would be the lateral and medial epicondyle of the distal humerus. From these points, we move caudally to the olecranon tuber, and this space between the olecranon tuber and the lateral epicondyle and the medial epicondyle medially would be the location of the elbow joint. So the flexor surface of the elbow joint is the cranial surface. So anything that decreases the angle between the antebrachium and the humerus would be considered flexion of the elbow joint, and conversely, increasing the angle between the antebrachium and the humerus would be extension of the elbow joint. So moving distally down to the carpus, we can palpate the accessory carpal bone. This is the location of the three subjoints of the carpal joints. The first joint would be between the antebrachium and the carpus, and that would be the antebrachial carpal joint. There would be a joint in here between the proximal and distal row of carpal bones, and that would be the middle carpal joint. And then there's a joint between the distal row of carpal bones and the metacarpal bones, and that would be the carpal metacarpal joint. All of the flex, all of the flexor surfaces of these joints is palmar. So anything that decreases the angle back here would be considered flexion of the carpal joints. Conversely, increasing the angle would be extension. There is some final joints distally between the metacarpal bones and the proximal phalanx, and that would be the metacarpophalangeal joint. Flexor surface is palmar, so that would be flexion of those joints. Extension increasing the ankle would be um, increasing the angle would be extension of those joints. And then finally, between the, the phalanges, there is a proximal interphalangeal joint between the proximal phalanx and middle phalanx, and there is a distal interphalangeal joint between the middle phalanx and the distal phalanx. The flexor surface of those joints is palmar, so anything that decreases the angle of those joints in this fashion would be flexion, anything that increases the angle would be extension. Good job, Butter. Good job, buddy.